advertised to, which means uh, I have to tell YouTube when we are advertising to people. Oh, uh, I just seem like, I, oh, I guess they market. I'll say it's not like necessarily someone, you don't necessarily see it, or do you? Or maybe it's only because I'm in our page that when I see that it says paid advertising or sponsorship or whatever the word it says on there. It's neither here nor there. Whatever. It's kind of the same like being spicy or what was the things that you said? Spicy or? Yes. Uh, so what I said, since we are live now, um, and I guess I need to be recording this one too. What I said was that hot is not a flavor. Hot is a sensation. And <clears throat> there are two categories of things. Flavors are sweet and sour and bitter and tangy and things like that and and hot no <laughs> hot is something that you feel like i feel dizzy i feel pain i feel pain in my mouth and well you that know some people feel hot. sweet some people feel sweet too but you know uh, that's a man, I don't know. Oh, 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 JT, so you, you, you've gone, you're doing football coach, English professor, like where's the middle ground? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, well, you know. Okay. Well, and this, you know, is a, uh, this is a new person here. Um, Daniel Berry Sports Highlights. I've never seen you in chat before. Hi. Hey, Welcome. what's up, Daniel? Okay. So why don't we do this then? Just because we were just having a little bit of fun, driving around a little bit, man. We got a pretty big um, show today. This is going to be a little bit different for us. This is kind of our first remake, I guess, right, JT, of the off season. What off season teaks take look like? We got the preseason, we got the in season, the postseason. Now we are in the off season, and uh, it's going to be fun. I'm really interested in this book. Before we even get going, welcome to everybody from the Bama Standard. Oh, I'm not um, even supposed to see. I'm slipping. I feel like we hadn't done this in a while. We, we're already showing. We're already showing the guest. That's okay. All right. Well. I, I, I was fine with that because we had a pre pre show and all that. I, I'm good. You know, I'm good. Um, man, I'm cool in the family, man. I'm cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so I think we're good, and we'll we'll roll through it. So, you know, as we always say, man, this is a family show. This We just have a good time. We don't have the big production like everybody else. We're sitting in the house. Um, JT's sitting in his room. At least he don't, he's not showing his diploma anymore that, you know, I had to help pay for it. It was sitting on the floor forever. I'm just so glad that I don't see that no more. Um, we got a guest here. I have no idea why he got a fly swatter right behind him on the uh, right of his Love shoulder. Man. But what? Uh, you I have time to explain that later, man. Don't even worry about that right now. <laughs> I was just saying, uh, ain't no flies out right now anyway. It's cold outside. Uh, so I, I'm welcoming in everybody from the Bama Standard. Thank you guys for uh, being able to simulcast uh, with us. I, I really appreciate that. You know, make sure you're hitting the like over on this side, subscribing to the channel. Make sure you're subscribing to Teague's Take. Just do all these things that we need to do to continue to grow both of these uh, great networks. All right. Um, and so uh, there's a lot that we got to be talking about. First of all, make sure you go back to our uh, menu. I guess that's the best way for me to put it. And make sure you look at my little 20 minute. It wasn't a, a big 18, rant. 18 minutes of Eight, change. 18 minutes of me talking about recruiting and how much of a hassle it is and why I don't like it. I did drop the F-bomb in there at one point in time, so oh. I, I don't know if JT bleeped it or whatever it was. I did not, but because but it, uh, it sure asked me about the ads and, like, how many f It, like, specifically asked me how many F-words were in there, and I was like, probably none. Yeah, there was one. I did say it was F'd up. Uh, but I used the whole word. I, I didn't say that. So it didn't come up on the shorts, though. So I don't know if we get in trouble for that or not, but I apologize. So here's the rundown. We got some questions we got to answer, right? Saban, DeBoer, what's the recruiting look like? How much difference is going to be? We got a great guest that's going to be able to help us dissect in this a little bit, give our opinions, our hot takes, um, and things of that. Who's in and out? We need to update everybody on that. Um, you know, with the transfer portal and just recruiting in general, who the people that signed early, um, who's actually left 
from that piece? And should we be panicking about um, any of this stuff? Second half of the show, we're going to talk about, uh, do some film study. Kevin Riley, man, I, I'm excited to be able to show you guys this film of Kevin Riley and Daniel Hill and give it a little bit of our evaluation of what we think these guys look like and what we think about how they will fit into the scheme that they're going to be running. They're both running backs, okay? Um, so before I actually give a formal introduction of our guests, I think we need to start the show officially, JT. So why don't we go ahead and hit this thing and start this show right now. Okay, so this is a, a, a tremendous Wednesday evening, and man, let me tell you, man, I'm so happy to be here. I've been looking forward to this show. Um, again, like I said, just, just because it's, such a, it's a new field for us and some great things that we're trying to get accomplished over this, this offseason. we got a lot to talk about. I gave a little bit of tease about the topics that we got to be able to talk about. Man, uh, it's been a whirlwind. I don't know how I really feel about this whole rec- It's stressful to me, man. It's stressful just because we got so many people moving around. And what I don't even have on the topic that I need to talk to our, our guests about and to JT is now Jim Harbaugh or, yeah, Harbaugh is out of Michigan. What is that going to do with this whole landscape? Um of recruiting how are we going to dive into some of those people are we going to be trying to pluck some of their dudes or are we just going to do what we do and still be bamboo okay um so before i bring in the guests let's go ahead and bring jt back real fast i know he got a little button that he can hit over, the, hit over there and so jt i don't know if you saw the news i know you got every alert how many alerts you got coming into your phone man that you know, between NFL, college. Oh, you you want to know like how many sports alerts do I have coming to my phone, or just alerts in general? Yeah, sports alerts first. Um, yes. very very few. But you got a lot of what chess and math alerts and <laughs> spelling bee alerts. <laughs> what, what, what is that? What, what um, do you mean? It, it's a lot of uh, it is a lot of chess alerts because I am playing um chess with with a bunch of people um but most of it um i actually really try to not have alerts come to my phone because i find it super annoying um, that's why you don't answer my text that's why i take you well, yeah, I mean, I after, once, text once, alert for yeah so right now i'm in the podcast focus mode so only like three people can actually contact me right now you being one of them um right. but once the bedtime starts like if it's not if it's not uh baby alerts like the the little baby cams I don't yeah. get much. Um, so usually how I get notified of things is um, people sending me messages. Like Glenn Wilson sent me a message on Discord in the group chat and said, I didn't think that Harbaugh was actually going to go to the Chargers. And I was like, oh, well, I guess Harbaugh went to the Chargers. I didn't get an alert <laughs> about that. But that's how that's how I found out. Um, and, and people like uh, Justin, who is in the chat, sending texts about Ryan Williams. I didn't know that either until he sent me that text message. So um, I get score updates from, like, the Mavs and the Cowboys sometimes. But Okay, well, here's my only request I have from you, and I'm okay with you not having alerts and all that kind of stuff. Only thing we want back when we send you something, we, if we send you a text, you don't even have to reply with an answer. Just give us the thumbs up, thumbs down, the heart, the exclamation point, just so we know you got it. You all know, you just so a, we know you got it. All of you have iPhones. It says, you see the little thing underneath that says delivered? That means delivered doesn't it. mean you got it. it that is, means it went through and it was sent to your phone. That doesn't oh, mean you actually it, looked at it's, it. It's in the end encrypted. It, it, that means I got it. Now, whether I looked at it, yes. You don't know whether I looked at it or not, but it did. It, it hit the phone. I'm sorry, don't ghost us, man. I mean, if we close, if I'm in your favorite section, which hopefully I am. You are. Okay. Do you need, do you need the proof? Is it? <laughs> are you going to show it? Let yeah. me see. Let me look. Don't, don't try to add it. See, oh, it says, it says 
It says dad. Well, see, what's, I hadn't I hadn't clicked on your beaches ad. What's that little Texas thing you got over there? Though? Uh, that that's a group chat from uh, <laughs> from high school because I'm still cool. Let's see, this, there's this, six oh. people in here. Okay, all right. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and get to our our people, man, because we got a very special person, here, and I love this guy uh, because he shoots it straight. You know, he's an expert. He's been doing this a long time, more than us. He actually has his own podcast, right? It's actually called In My Own Words. I love that about him. He's also a UA alum, so he loves the university. But we like him particularly for this show, outside of those things, because he's a senior reporter for the Alabama uh, football um, via Touchdown Alabama, the magazine, who y'all offer. And I got some beef with him because I think he he knows something about this stat that I sent you, JT, about me and the scoring and me and Jameer Gibbs. Yeah, yeah, we were actually uh, talking about Jameer Gibbs a little pre-show when, uh, since I, okay. I do have to put him on blast a little bit because I send out invites that tell our guests when to show up before the show. I usually tell them 15 minutes before we air, which is 8 o'clock Central. I'm getting the show. I'm doing all things. I'm I'm getting the video set up, and his face pops up on my screen at seven thirty five. Oh well, you know that big face he got. It probably took up the whole screen too, and that's why we need to bring him into the screen right now. Man, everybody, give a round of applause to Stephen M. Smith. I know he can't see nothing through them glasses because he ain't cleaned them glasses up in a minute. He probably, you know, people he did wear pre-show. glasses. I watched him. Huh? He did pre-show. I watched him. Oh, he did watch him I, I, did, I <laughs> did. I did do it pre-show, though. I did, I did do it pre-show, but, man, it, it, it's always good to be a part of this family right here with the legendary George and the analytical legend JT. It, it's fun, man. This is yes, fun. Uh, well, this is great. I'm so glad you're here, man. And make sure you guys follow this guy on X. Coaching M. Smith is his handle there. I don't know how much he does on IG. Totally different name. We're not going to go through this. We rehashed you know it, but it's what? Universal World 1919. You know I, 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 I'll say right. this. I, I, I had to go on ahead and get the IG one go, man. I oh, it's go gone? And, it's gone, man. I had to okay, get okay. one go. If I... If I do bring it back, it will be under a name everybody can understand because I've got it from family now. They're like, man, I tried to find you. It's you in I What the world? I'm trying to send you some Christmas bunny, and I can't even figure out your name. I'm like, I'm, I'm like auntie, auntie, my bad, my bad, auntie. I, we, we will get that fixed. <laughs> we get that. Uh, yeah, so, see, she said, yeah. she said, we're not asking you to be better. We're asking you to do better. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. right. That's right. Well, you know, it's it, we're glad you're here, brother. And thank you so much for what you bring to everything that you do. Your own show, you know, the Bama Standard, and then coming here and getting um, in the distance with us. Because we want to really pick your brain. Because we've had to kind of switch a little bit. When I originally talked to you about this, we really, I really wanted to hit in to what uh, Saban – you know, just the way he recruits, what you've seen over the years, what his philosophy has kind of been. And now I think it's great, actually, because maybe you with the little short time that the Boer has been there. Have you seen any differences in maybe just style tactics um, in the differences that they they recruit? I mean, it's it's kind of the same, because if you, if you think about it, Coach Saban is still a fixture in that recruiting, too. Like, he's not on-field coach, and we get that. But from his CEO perspective, he brings the board into the office. He brings the coaching staff, and he says, hey, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm seeing. You know, Coach Saban from the office, he's making phone calls to parents. I mean, he's making phone calls to a lot of these kids. So he's still a fixture of it. I feel like – I think DeBoer, his style is uh, he's getting more of just the kids that are just hungry – that just really, really want it versus uh, when Saban finally got the ball rolling in Tuscaloosa, it was, okay, Bama's going to recruit itself. We'll get any five-star kid we want, any four-star kid we want, just, just come on in here. Versus at the beginning, it was, we're trying to build something here. So I feel like not much has necessarily changed. It's just now DeBoer is kind of getting his sea legs under him in terms of I'm no longer in the Pac-12, I'm in the SEC now. So I got to recruit a different kind of athlete. 
I got to recruit a different kind of mindset. And Saban is kind of uh, navigating him through, this is how we do it here. This is where you put your optic, your optics at now. So it's kind of just a repositioning for DeBoer. But good thing for him, he kept guys like Freddie Roach on staff that know mm-hmm. the state. He kept guys like Robert Gillespie on staff that know the South. He kept guys like David Ballou and a few others on staff that understand how to recruit this program. And then the guys he's brought in, the coaches he's brought in, Kane Womack, you know, he knows the South. Not only at South Alabama, but was at Ole Miss. Uh, he played at Arkansas, was a fullback there. You bring in Coach Molin Gwist, who coached at Texas A&M, coached in the NFL with the Dallas Cowboys. He was also at Texas A&M coaching cornerbacks. So he's also brought in guys that get the South, that get how to recruit these young men. Okay, so you get – so, and I know it's early. We haven't – there are guys that are recommitting and signing. Do you have an early – grade you know say just you know in the few weeks that he's been here how do you grade him out just on the recruiting landscape thus far on the recruiting landscape thus far i give him b minus thus far and and because i give a reason why i give him a b minus if you talk to a lot of these kids from the south they don't know him so he's got to actually foster these relationships right now and so he and his staff, they have been getting out here. They've been hitting the road, especially in the state of Alabama, going to several different high schools, um, kind of immersing themselves in that culture. So I give him a B minus for stepping out the comfort zone and going out there. So you, you, you got to let these kids know who you are. So, for example, when Freddie Roach walks into a high school, they know who Freddie Roach is. When Robert Gillespie walks into a high school, they know who he is. They, they don't know who is Kang and the boy. I don't know you from a can of paint. You got to show me who you is, who you are. So he, the, the fact that he's getting on the plane uh, with Coach Courtney Morgan and all of these new coaches he's brought in, and they're actually going to these young men and putting themselves out there, that's the first step. That's the major part of it. So I give him a B- minus for at least starting that process and getting out there. Okay. So, JT, um, just because I heard you, it's like when you eat that food. You know, when you when you taste something that's, like, really good or really bad, you you give that little mm or mm, you know. JT made this little sound when he said something when, he, when you, you said B minus. So I need to know what he's thinking about this. Uh, yeah, I, 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 thought, I thought that was too low, man. Like, he got Ryan Williams to recommit. And I mean, of the, the, and that of was the huge. 2024 class, because we talked about this pre-show. There's only two dudes who left. You still got the whole class intact. That that's an easy A. That's that's at least that's at least uh, 95. Just <clears throat> keeping the class that was already coming in from not jumping off the cliff and going somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, look. Uh, I need to do this real fast because y'all getting really hot in here and I love the energy and the tempo and I appreciate all this kind of stuff. So I need to cool y'all off just for a quick second, right? I need to cool y'all off for a little bit. And it's cold out here in Texas a little bit, but I actually think about this all the time, JT, from week to week because I'm driving by and I see these old cheap little pools sometimes um, on the side of the road or something. And it always makes me want to go to the beach, right? And And then I want to bring it home. A little bit you know how do i get this sandy little area where i can just walk into this nice little piece so we do have a a proud sponsor someone that's actually presenting this show for us today we were talking about this pre-show what happens when you have someone that's um you know sponsoring your show and we're very thankful for this company um, because not only do they have a dynamic product um you need to you need to hear about it and see it so i need to introduce you to beaches llc Let me tell you about Beaches LLC. Yes, Beaches LLC is your source in the state of Alabama and the Florida Panhandle for exquisite quartz sand beach pools by Biodesign USA. A Biodesign beach sculpted pool is crafted with beach entries, customized seating areas, and swimming zones, and they all can be personalized to your swimming needs. The Biodesign swimming pool is meant to immerse you in your surrounding environment. The illusion of a truly beautiful beach can be created and extended onto the patio area, creating one seamless shore environment. 
Let them help you turn your dream backyard escape into reality with an eco-friendly, more durable, less time, and less expensive to maintain, totally customizable pool. To learn more about turning your dream into a reality, please visit their website at www.yourbackyardbeach.com. You know what I think? Is, this thing is so good. I'm hoping that they uh, actually start to try to do something for these players. Can you imagine? These guys are getting houses and homes and other kind of stuff. What if they did? They rolled up on something? Because see, uh, I don't know if y'all saw that um, article on uh, Athletic.net where they put in these Lamborghinis and Rolls Royces out in the middle of the field. Can you imagine taking someone to a nice little home out here where there's one of these beaches just sitting there? And they're like, "Hey, man, go go walk off into this thing. You don't take no steps or nothing, man. You just walk in there like sand. That shit plush, man. I'm telling you, I'm kind of <laughs> excited about that for real. All right. Um, so I need to ask because you guys were talking about this. Who of the class? And I don't know. Right, because I don't, I haven't studied it that much. Of the class that signed in December, the early signing, have we got everybody back? Who have we lost, Stephen? You know what? What does that look like with the class that already committed? So, early? so only two Georgia lost, only two, and that's the that's the defensive back Jameer Grimsley, uh, the four star. He hit the portal. I think he's now JT at Ohio State, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, if he's not, correct me if I'm wrong, but Jameer Grimsley is out. And then the quarterback, the five-star Jillian Sand, is out. He is at Ohio State. Those are the only two that were lost. So does that go into JT? Is that another reason why you're saying that's pretty damn good? Uh, or you – well, let me say this. How much of this are you giving credit to the new coach versus Saban still staying around and trying to convince these guys to – ride it out even though he's in the background i'm asking jt that first how, how much influence you think saban really got in this you know that's a that's a great <clears throat> question um i don't know but i hope it's some uh because that bodes well um for future um you know if he's if he's going to be in the background also trying to attract talent um recruiting going forward then that would be nice. Um, if it's not, I mean, I, I think it's, I think it's a win-win because if it's not, then that kind of lets you know that you can start moving on, that you don't need him. Um, but if he is, then that's also a pretty good thing because then you know that you've got something still going forward as long as he wants to be around and sit, having an office in, in Brian Denny stadium. So, um, but I, I really don't know. I, at the end of the day, um, I think the kids still got to know that Nick Saban ain't the one that's going to be on the field coaching. Um, it's still going to be run the way that Kalen DeBoer wants it to be run. It's going to be um, – it, it's his show now. It's going to be his product on the field. It's going to be his offense and um, Coach Womack's defense. And I would like to think that they're smart enough to realize that. Yep. So are, is there any confliction um, – with the head coach or the AD. So let me let me say this first. So I think this is great that Saban is still there because I think behind the scenes, he is also continuing the fundraising. He's the one that's already been talking to alumni. And I, boosters, NIL Collective, man. NIL. NIL Collective. He's doing that. So he's built these relationships with these people because I know giving money has a lot to do with trust. You know, I know him. I've been around this, and I like this. So having him sitting in that chair – is one piece, right? And I think that's great. And so my other piece on the, I'm going to say it's a negative side, right? But I think it's something you think about. What does it, how does, how do you think, Stephen, this makes, um, does it make anyone else nervous? Does it make Greg Byrne nervous? Like, this, hey, this is kind of out of my control. You know, this, this, this is like, Saban is like the AD, <laughs> you know, but he ain't really in the chair. Is it affect? Coach DeBoer, you know, where he's thinking, hey, I got this guy sitting on my shoulder. I know he ain't calling the plays, but he's still got a lot of god on power here. And he's sitting up in a nice – I wonder where he got him sitting at. Did they make him – what did they do in his office? Is anybody, you, you took a thing on the office? Where is that saving sitting at? Good Lord. I, I mean, I mean, to, to me, guys, 
I don't think, well, first of all, for, for DeBoer, I don't think there's, I don't think he sees it as pressure because he wanted to come here. Like, if, if you if you thought this was pressure, you don't sign a piece of paper to come here. He comes to Alabama on the plane, gets off the plane, and he has his introductory press conference January 13th, which was a Saturday. I, I was there. And he talked about this was the only place I would have left Washington for. This is the only place. He's like, man, I get the pressure that's here, but I came for the pressure that's here. So I don't think I don't think feeling the pressure. I think if anything, in the back of Greg Burns' mind, he knows my success is tied to this hire. Mm-hmm. Greg Burns knows this. Just like even in death, people honor Mal Moore because Mal Moore's success was tied to the hire of Nick Saban. And and with all that Nick Saban did and accomplished in Alabama, which was an awful lot. People still to this day, even in death, reveal Mal Moore. So Greg Byrne knows, hey, I got a lot riding on this puppy. This better hit because my name is tied to this. Just like my name is tied to Nate Oates because I hired him to coach Alabama men's basketball. My name is tied to Kagan DeBoer because I hired him to be the one to succeed Nick Saban. So I think it's even more on Greg Byrne than what it is on Kang and DeBoer. Yes. Uh, can anybody look up and see is Alabama beating Auburn or not in the uh, basketball game since you uh... – So, so um, Stephen Burton didn't want us to actually uh, tell him to score. Uh, but since oh. you asked, I have to. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm giving you about three seconds, Stephen, to mute me because here it goes. There is six minutes left in the in the second half. Alabama is up 65 to 60. Oh, okay. Well, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, now, now I, I, I'll say this, and, and this, this is my quick segment about basketball. I did not want Charles Bediaco to turn pro. I wanted Chucky to come back for another year. That, that boy seven two. I want Chucky to come back. When Charles went pro, I was like, man, golly, we got no big man. So you, you bring in Grant Nelson from South Dakota State, North, one of them, North Dakota State, South Dakota. We came from one of the two Dakotas. So you bring in <laughs> Grant Nelson, and then you bring in Armando Estrada. He comes in here. And I'm like, I don't know how Nate Oates is going to get this thing to work. But he's found a way to get this thing to work. Uh, this group is 11 and 5. This group is like 11 and 5. Can, can go 12 and 5. It takes care of Auburn. They found a way. And I'm, I'm just happy they didn't found a way. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I'm hoping to get this on ba- basketball games or at least one um, this year as well. Okay. So we got a couple minutes left in this segment here. So I do want to ask this question. And in the second segment that we're going to go into, I ain't forgot about the doggone fly swatter back there, so I'm going to ask about that uh, when we get Man, ready to go to it. Right, 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 we're not going to talk about it right now. I told you. <laughs> just, just, just leave it right where it is, okay? So now uh, there was so much angst, right? I think there was so much angst when we actually start hitting the portal you know, when it opened up and everybody going, that was kind of the same way. You know, like, oh, man, we're losing our dudes. You got 29 or whatever guys in there. Are we supposed to be panicking? Are, are, should we, are we okay, or what? what is the real – well, how do you feel personally, and then how do you think it's feeling in Tuscaloosa, I guess, Steven? Oh, oh okay, so the panic question first. Th- there was a lot of panic, especially when you look at when you saw guys like King of Downs hit the portal. That brought a lot of panic. When you saw just, just different guys, especially guys that were starters, hit the portal, that brought panic. But I think – as it all started to boil down, uh, if Saban's retirement taught us anything, it taught us, okay, we're about to really see who's committed to the program for the culture, for the pageantry, for the history, who's committed to the program versus who's just committed to be coached by Nick Saban and who's committed for the NIL check. I felt like that... Saban's retirement taught us that we're about to really see who wants the program for real versus who's coming to, I guess, coach Saban's going to help me become an all American 
He's going to help me become first team all SEC. He's going to help me get to the NFL and, and all this stuff. So we start to see that now with Saban's retirement. But at this point, th- th- there's no sense of panic and just do two. DeBoer made a splash in the portal. You got Gurmy Bernard from Washington, who basically replaces what you lost in Isaiah Bond, who goes to Texas. You get a real deal athletic center who can snap the ball. Praise Jesus. Glassford <laughs> <laughs> in here. Thank God. Got that guy. And, 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 then, and then you get a quarterback in Austin Mack, who's 6'6, 230, coming over from Washington. And of course, the portal opens back up on April 15th. And with Jim Harbaugh going to the NFL, leaving Michigan, you got to ask this question Does Brian Kelly leave LSU for Michigan? Because Brian Kelly has stated that Michigan is his dream job. So what's that tie? Is that what it was? Because I'm trying to figure out how how why, why would he want to go to Michigan? But you say he just he made so, a so, statement. So, so he he, he has mentioned that Michigan <laughs> is his dream job. Now, does Brian Kelly do that? Because if he does that, now you got Michigan and LSU players kind of hopping in the portal, and when that portal opened back up, here's Kang and the board looking here. You know, we got 79 players on scholarship players in the active roster. You need 85. So that's six players. You can get out of the portal right there. So this Jim Harbaugh decision to go doesn't open up where Brian Kelly bolts to Michigan from LSU. Okay. So, JT, how do you feel about this, the the panic piece? How did you feel personally with it when, well, you weren't getting all the alerts like, I was. <laughs> no, I was going to hold on. Someone leave it. Somebody leave it. Another one left. Another one left. I'm like, what? what look, look, look. Before, 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 before JT answers, I'm going to say this. People yeah. were calling me when everyone was leaving. They're like, Stephen, why he left? Stephen, what did he do? <laughs> Stephen, track this guy down. I'm like, I'm like, y'all. First off, I'm not Jesus. That's first and foremost. That's it. Second off, y'all. Look, these kids got their own mind. They got their parents. They got agents. There's nothing I can do about the situation. Well, Stephen, can you put in the call with Nick Saban? You think Nick gonna pick up the phone for me right now? Well, no, but Steven, they said you can see the future because the glasses you got on, they thick, man, and they figure you can see all kinds of shit. <laughs> all right, man. I'm going to quit playing. <laughs> I'm going to quit playing, man. Look, 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 man. Look, man. Right. It's a good thing if I can see what I'm having for breakfast the next day. <laughs> yeah. All right. JT, so what was your, your reaction to some of this stuff early on with people leaving when people leaving um i didn't have any panic um mainly because i wish i was trying to find the message that i had sent in the uh in the bama discord as it was going on but it was something to the effect of the team is going to be better long term if those players that were here just to play for nick saban and no other reason leave they're 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 better off uh, because if you know they a lot of coaches all the time talk about you know what's your why if your why that you were here is because that guy is coaching and only that guy is coaching then if you stay and that's still your reason then your effort is probably going to tank your willingness to do things whether it be um, your effort in the classroom or at practice or, you know, it, it can permeate many different things. Um, so I, I was kind of like, look, if they want to go, like if they want to go, you should, if, if I was head coach, I would bring him in, say, why? Well, hey, do you just want to fill me in on why you, you're trying to go. Um, and if your answer is, well, coach Saban is not the coach anymore. I would say, all right, thank you for your time. The door is from whence you came. Um, that ain't what you would have said. You would have said what Malachi Moore said. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I said. Yeah, which, 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 those shirts better sell like hotcakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's about to get paid. That's going to be bigger than any NIL deal that he uh, can like, be Like, them shirts better sell, sell, sell. 
Okay, so this is my piece, and I, I, I'm gonna give a shout out to our good buddy here, the president of Tide, Texas. He's probably the one that kind of. Oh, here. I well, say, so hold on. So um, the Bama Standard said, uh, "Say it, George." Um, so I think what he said was, "If they ain't wearing crimson, <laughs> them." <'em."> so, <laughs> that's exactly what he said. <laughs> that's exactly what he said. I, sh I should have the uh, the screen. What did you I have had... that button? Where'd you get that button from? The, the, the button, time, the button was built on into the board. I, I was trying to find it earlier, but then I'm just. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Yeah, no, but see, I, I had a whole, I had a whole speech prepared. Um, it, I know you probably have never watched the Boondocks, um, but, oh if you, yes, but yes. if you have, you remember when yes. Wiley was sitting oh, there and they were selling dude. chocolate? Yes. <laughs> that whole speech. If you have, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go look it up because that's what I would say to the kids. That whole, that whole speech. Oh, <laughs> oh well, maybe maybe Bro, you put that on a short. How long is the speech? Maybe you put it on the short somewhere and put it on YouTube. Well, he, he said. You the plane you came in on the socks with the bezel. It was a lot more shoes. You uh, you <laughs> and if I see you in the street, I'ma slap the <laughs> out you. <laughs> oh, Lord. That was oh, legendary. Lord. That that was legendary. That was legendary. great speech. Oh man. No, 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 no. Okay. That was man. All right, so let me get to this. I'm going to calm it down again. Man, we got to go back to the beach one more time. It's getting hot up in here, man. Um, so John Anu Frycheck, who is the president of Titan, Texas, actually sent me. I don't know. Maybe he just, you know, you know how you get these just random things. You're like, man, you just kind of needed that. And he yeah. sent me a text message and he said, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he said, Bama. Ha still has at least I add at least because it's kind of changed since the time you sent it. Forty-eight of the top two hundred recruits in the nation. Basically, and twenty of them are on offense and twenty-seven are on defense. <laughs> oh man! And so he was saying, and he had it broken down by position: three quarterbacks, five running backs, five wide receivers, four interior offensive linemen, three offensive tackles, one tight end. Uh, Nine defensive tackles, edge rushers six, inside linebackers four, uh, cornerbacks five, safeties three, right? So that gives us uh, the 48 or 49 that we have. And in the portal, he said there's still 35 top 100 recruits in the portal. Two quarterbacks, four running backs, four wide receivers, two inside offensive linemen, three offensive tackles, one tight end, seven defensive tackles, five edge rushers, three or two inside linebackers, five cornerbacks. So basically said they were still, we, we're, we're still loaded with the current roster that we have and there's still people in the portal and one more opened up like this that we're going to have some pickings that we're able to do. And so basically he was telling me, whatever you feeling, whatever angst you feeling, screw that because there's not very many teams that still have the roster that we have built. Maybe Georgia. You know, it's still kind of stacked. Texas is doing good. Ohio State, Texas a and But, you know, his question to me was, how many teams actually have 48 of the top 200 recruits on their current roster? So I said, you know what? You the man. And I'm going to give you a shout out because – I didn't do that kind of research, and I I, I said, you know, we need That's to make JT a, type stuff. Like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, man, we got to have a graphic for this or whatnot. And so, you know, shout out to John O and Titan Texas for being able to put something like this. And so, my answer to about panicking, no, because after he gave it, I was like, man. And now, knowing that we're going to have the support of uh, benefactors, right? Um, our AD, saving and everything else. That, man, we're going to put up a fight. We ain't going down swinging. I mean, without swinging. Um, look, look, as hmm. long as Coach Say is still doing this. Right. He coming back. That was the biggest one, wasn't it? Uh, yes. Henry, son. How old is that man, though, for real? Because he was there when I was there. He got it. He, man, uh, you, you know Say keep hiding his age. Like, he, he, will not, he will not come out and say it. That man well, keep hiding his age. Well, he drinking some. So, okay. So, we're gonna go ahead and transition to the second part of the show. No, are we? Did we? Right, did we? No. We chat about uh, Harbaugh going to the Chargers. No, no, we didn't. So let's do that. 
All right. Well, Harbaugh's going to the Chargers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And okay. Here, here's my question. Here's my question for you guys. Harbaugh's going to the Chargers. Portal's going to open. Two, I'm, I'm giving you an over-under. Do you think it'll be over two guys or lower than two guys that actually transfer from Michigan to Alabama? Numbers two. More or under? Steven, how many guys do we get from Michigan? If any. It could be zero. I don't know. I'm just giving I, you a number two. You going over or under? I, I, I actually got it right at two. I think we look at one of their defense. Oh, games. come on, man. You go I got to oh, pick a half number. Bye, bye, bye. I'm going to go under. I got one, an offensive lineman. Okay. I got, right. I got an offensive lineman. Prim- primarily a tackle. Yeah, they have some big linemen. What about you, JT? What do you think? Um, I would have I would have taken the under on that as well. Um, I think that uh, – I really don't think that Michigan's going to have the attrition that Alabama had. Um, I think mm-hmm. a lot of the guys at Michigan are actually there um, because they wanted to play for Michigan, um, not just the Jim Harbaugh. I think that's why they have so many damn seniors on their team, and that's why they don't have very many five stars on their team. Those mm-hmm. players have been there for a while. They're they're there for the program. They were not. Th- I think a lot of them were not there for Jim Harbaugh. And I think that we can look at Jim Harbaugh missing damn near half the season. Six games. <laughs> and seeing how they rallied around um, Jerome Moore anyway, I, I don't – that that was an actual team. Um, I don't – I think it's very clear that what we had was not a team. It was a whole bunch of guys who were riding the brand and – trying to be in the spotlight okay i would do with that and i'm i'm kind of i'm in agreement with you guys i don't think we'll get that many but i do think they're going to get poached because i think people in their conference and stuff will try to entice them with money cash whatever just to try to tear them down a little bit you know uh an ohio state or something just trying to pick their best guys off just so they have a better chance of beating them that's my opinion um on that though all right so that's all that. JT, you want to give you a little quick disclaimer a little bit since we know we're going to have people listen to this and figure out when they need to switch up. Yeah, uh, so I think we are going to take just a small ad break here um, before we get to the film. So on the other side of that, we're going to be looking at uh, we're going to be looking at the two running backs that we've got that are already signed. I think they're both early enrollees. They're both on campus already, right? Um, and then after that, we're going to address some questions that I've been seeing in chat. Uh, one of them just came from Trainwreck. Uh, we've got another one from, from uh, Slab Buster and, and things like that. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, all right. So I think we're good to go. Um, okay. All right. Well, Okay, so what we're looking at here now is uh, which one of these films you got up? This is a. Uh, uh, I think this is Daniel Hill. This is Daniel Hill. Okay, so why don't we why don't you while he's putting this film up and getting it ready, uh, Stephen, why don't you kind of tell us what you know about him, where he's from, any measurables and stuff of that nature that you do. Do you have any of that off the top of your head, or did I throw you? Oh, oh no, you know? I, 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 got, I got some of it right here, and then the rest of it. I know I can pull up from from the UA right here. Okay, so why don't you just get why don't you just give us some talking points about him a little bit um, that you already know about Mr. Daniel Hill? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, the kid, the, the dude's a phenomenal. The dude's a powerful running back, compacted, six feet, about two hundred thirty pounds. But he's a compact running back, power running back. Now he doesn't have just the breakaway speed of Kevin Riley. When I look at Kevin Riley, he's just got straight on speed, just straight on burst explosion. But Daniel Hill runs hard from the pads. Kind of reminds me of Brian Robinson when B Rob came in 2017. Just a tough, hard nosed runner, good in pass protection. Not necessarily the straight nine burst of speed. He can he can he he can go. He does have a bit of a gear, but it's not like your it's not like your Josh Jacobs, your Kenyon Drakes, your Jameer Gibbs of the world. 
kind of reminds me of a, of a, of a bit of B Rob, but he gives you the power running ability. He gives you the pass blocking aspect. And Daniel Hill, kind of an underrated pass catcher. They threw the ball mm-hmm. and tell you about the backfield quite a bit. And he does have soft hands. He can catch the football. He can tuck it away, turn it, and, and get up and move. So, athletic pass catcher, bruiser type guy, does have some speed, not necessarily breakaway. He, he's kind of, he, there's not really just one thing he's an A plus in. He's kind of a B plus, A minus to A across the board, which he's solid. He's solid, just not a guy that you would go, oh my gosh, that's special, but he's solid. So he, there's, uh, uh, and I appreciate you saying that, right? Because I sent some messages to JT a little bit earlier saying, okay, what do I think about this? So I, I want to, I'm going to come from an angle of this, of the valuation piece a little bit. Listen, the guy's a great player. He's coming to Alabama, right? People spend a lot more time evaluating college players than I do, <clears throat> right? But as a coach, as a high school coach that had a lot of talent on our team and spent a lot of time speaking to college coaches about how they look, I want to be able to talk to maybe the young person who's watching this who's not this type of player and what their uh, highlight films need to look like. There's a right. difference when you're just doing that, but what you need to have to peak people's interest. So I need for y'all to try to separate that a little bit because when you're the man, you don't have to have all this. They kind of know it. But if you're the one who they're saying they're you're under recruited, <clears throat> you got exactly one minute to grab that college coach's attention. So you better have some things in your first Five plays. <laughs> yeah, I would say three. Yes, yes, and, yes. And, and, and that's and and that's why, guys. Going back to remember, 2016, uh, Josh Jacobs came late in that 2016 recruiting class out of a McLean High School in Tulsa. Jacobs came late, and that was because his recruiting tape didn't come out till late. And I remember it, it was Burton Burns who sat down, shouts out to Burton Burns, by the way. It was Coach Burns who sat down and actually looked at the first five to six plays of Jake of Josh's tape, and he was like, who is this kid? And uh, Burton Burns was the one that said, save it. If you don't get your behind on this plane, Burton was the one that got saved on the plane to go look at Josh because Josh was under-recruited. They had Josh as a three-star and Josh was just killing it at McLean Tulsa High School. Okay, so one of the first things you got, specifically with running backs, one of the things that you need to be able to show is can you block, right? Whether right. it's pass block or something else. So when you hit this tape and you see the, the big circle lined up on him, the first thing he shows, he gets up in his DB's butt and just drives a dude back, pancakes him, it's kind of – embarrassing good lord can you imagine being another dude uh because at first i was like the running back you know i was looking at that play on the running back um but then i realized that ain't who i was supposed to be looking at (laughs) that's all the circle um but anyway so he pancakes this dude so that's the first piece where he actually yes when he puts this guy underneath can you pray to you do you first hold on jt thank you for stopping it right here this guy was on the line of scrimmage. <laughs> yeah, uh, he, he drove him for a first down and then put him in the dirt. Yeah, so if you're talking about toughness and the things that a coach wants to see, and I'm going to try to find that sheet for one of these episodes where I can show you the check boxes that you actually have. Because of, And part of my deal when I was a head coach, I did speak to coaches and I actually was given a sheet of, hey, these are the things that we're looking at and we're scoring, and you got to meet this minimum score before we even – um, think about recruiting you. So anyway, this is one of them. Okay. Um, you guys alluded to this on this next play. You can go ahead and um, let it go, JT. The the next play, now, even as a running back, you need to be able to see if he can catch. What is he going to do? Now, this guy was playing um, in the slot. Yeah, they quite ran a bit. The screens and some different things. So um, as you can see, he's down here in the bottom. Yep, he was in uh, as a number two wide receiver. Now, I like that um, 
yeah, as Steven said, you know, really soft hands, being able to judge the ball um, and all this kind of stuff. The only thing I would say about this highlight when you keep going into it, not this particular highlight, his real, I'm sorry, is what kind of routes are you actually showing? Mm-hmm. Again, nothing to this. You you know, if you're a wide receiver, you need to show an out or come back and all this kind of stuff. So it seemed like they kind of threw a lot of go balls to this guy. He was just going to go out, jump some people. Show He was showing his athletic ability uh, as well. Would y'all agree with that? Just I know we're going to show some more tape. Um, but that's yeah, pretty and, good over and, the shoulder. And, yeah, and for, 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 for a lot of these guys coming out of high school, especially if you are the best player on the team you know, offensively, they're going to throw a lot of go balls to you. You're not going to have a diversified route tree. You're going to have a couple of routes. Quarterback may be good, may not be good at all, but they're going to give you a couple of routes. Just tell the quarterback, hey, man, if, if Junior over there is open, throw the ball up. <laughs> throw the ball up. Let Junior yeah, go look hot. At, look at your it. matchup. <laughs> if that this guy has four or five stars, that guy does it. Just, I don't care what the coverage is. Just throw it. Just throw it. Yep, yep. And they probably should be saying, don't kick the ball to him. I know I've well, said that a lot of times. Yes. Please don't but kick I do, the ball to him. I do have to dock him some points on this play. All right. All right. What because he this kid was, uh... is not supposed yeah. to tackle you. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, especially when he looked like an official way back there. I thought <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, hey, come on, man. You, you are – this ain't, this ain't Pat <laughs> McAfee – <laughs> this is somebody else, and you are six foot two forty. Um, that guy's not supposed to tackle you. Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. know, it, it's it's really not that big of a deal. But I would that be I would back. be uh, clowning him on the sideline. That that was something I'd be making fun of him for. So yeah. so, ba- so so basically so basically JT, you, you would be telling him, man, you get Steve and M. Smith tackle you. <laughs> oh no! Look, I, I I get to I get to coach returners. Um, and by coach returners, I mean kind of evaluate and then just kind of talk shit. Um, I, on the first day, the first thing I tell the punt returners is uh, if you catch a punt and the first guy tackles you, you're fired. And the first thing I tell the uh, the kick returners are if you catch a kick and you break one and the kicker tackles you, you're fired. I will. There's, <laughs> those are the two things that can't happen. Well, maybe we need to show some highlight reels of some kickers that have actually destroyed some people from time to time. Maybe, maybe you got to put a disclaimer depending on who the kicker is. No, no, no. Look, if you get tackled by Will Riker, I mean, that, that's Will Riker. You know, mm-hmm. uh, Alabama has officially beaten Auburn. Hip, 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 hip. Uh, All right, then they don't. All right. right. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's good. Okay, so this is another one just where he's. Pass and running straight another up the fade. field. Again, another fade ball, just going up and jumping. Right. So, you know, to me, um, now he's, you remember, he's a running back and they got him lined up out here, wide receiver, and just, just jump balls. Right. So, wow, just literally mossed that guy. Yeah, he is. So, you know, again, um, I'm, I'm speaking to a person who hasn't, uh, necessarily made it yet. When you're seeing that, make sure you diversify the early, early parts of your, Deal. So, in other words, which I've been told, you know, if you have a jump ball, you don't need to put another jump ball and another jump ball, and another jump ball, all right behind each other, because they're saying, "I already seen that," and these guys are impatient. And you got to mm-hmm. remember that there are so many huddle tapes and clips. It's not just yours when you're one high school, but they come from Texas and Mississippi and California and everywhere else. That you better get in what you need to get in in the first few plays, just like this, showing that. So when I saw this JT, it made me actually think of the offense that they're going to be running um, at Bama. You know, him taking the handoff, cutting inside. It's a zone um, play. Yeah, which is actually quite I mean, opposite of what you'll see from Kyle Hill a lot. Yeah. So this is uh, – oh, I'm sorry. We, we, we switched. No, this is uh, – I said oh, okay. Kyle Hill. I meant – Kevin Riley. I don't know why I said Kyle Hill. I think that's a YouTuber that I watch. You uh, had you had Mississippi State on the mind there, JT. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> yeah. There's another Moss again. It, you know, this is where you see athleticism, right? You line up in the slot. You line up in the backfield. You're blocking guys down the field. You're tipping the ball up with one hand. I mean, it's just it's unfair. 
uh, you know what he's doing to guys, but that's why you get you know. Oh, you're gonna love this you. comment. Mm-hmm. What's that? Oh my God, who is that? First of all, put your real name on the screen. Don't be coming me with no password because you get personal now. You know what I'm saying? You get personal. Uh, yeah, you don't know anything about that, uh, JT. But uh, th- that was like our rivalry school. They were very, very good, and they actually used to run. They used to be like the old parish or something where they were just winging, running wing T type of stuff with running backs, and it was, it was very hard to defend. Um, By the way. By the way, can, can I just say how much I hated going up against the wing T office in high school? Can, can I, can, 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 can I, I hate game planning I, against it. No, 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 no J, JT. See, you hate game planning against it, but I'm gonna tell you a story. So, before we, before we continue this, so y'all would not believe this, but my junior year playing high school football, my defensive coordinator thought it would be hilarious to put me at defensive tackle. It thought it would be hilarious. So How much did you weigh? <laughs> One fifty. Mm. They put me at defensive tackle, and we were going to be a wing T offense. So they had the sniffer back, which was flanking, which was behind the uh, the right tackle. So every time they put him there, the play was always going to the right. So they snapped the ball. I don't know how I just split through the offensive line. But I split through, find the guy, and you know how they tell you. If you can't make the tackle, just hold on for dear life to the help come. Yep. So I'm, I'm sitting here, grab the guy. I, I, I'm making the tackle myself now, but my teammates just thought it would be funny to jump on the guy and have me on the ground. I get up off the ground after the play is over in this go against this wing T play. And my defense according to looks and goes, Steve actually tackled the guy? <laughs> I'm like, yes, I actually tackled the guy. And, and, and the head coach, who's in me at gumshoe, is like, who went to tackle? Steve? <laughs> <laughs> My God, it's going to snow. Steve went. Well, they probably were supposed to trap you, and they probably just said, nah, don't even block him. Just let him uh, come on through. He ain't going to make the tackle. But that's good. So why don't you give us one more story now because we got this. Uh, tell us oh, about okay. this damn. Tell us about the dog old fly swatter back here. Why you got this fly swatter? Oh, right. Okay, yeah, let, so, let me let me go well, full. Let me let me get him on full screen then. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. we, we gotta oh. we gotta understand this. Okay, so so so, so there's there, there's two reasons behind there's two reasons behind the fly swatter. So there, there there's my reason and there's the actual reason. So my reason behind the fly swatter here is I want to bring back the no fly zone defense for Alabama. That's why. <laughs> That's my reason. That's my reason behind the fly swatter in here. The actual reason we had a fly come in the house and I had to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> this dude here. Oh my gosh. Oh, well, you know what? All right, let's get back to this film, man. So he he rolled it. What do we have here, JT? What is, man, you quick and fast, man. I mean, oh, we're going the other like... direction. We're going the other direction. Basically, what you're going to see, well, basically what you're going to see out of him, and I like this because this is a different, this is a passing play. He's in the slot again, and he, uh, well, you can just see, he's just running through tackles. Um, Just a physical type guy who can catch the ball, and I don't know. I I don't know that we need to go into his too much about him i think you guys summed him up right he's physical yeah i I wish i would have seen more physical more physicality like out of this tape um yeah think things like this that you know if you're you're 240 pounds use it because yeah i i think when you watch um i think when you watch the other when you watch uh kevin riley You're going to yeah. see a, a Oh, it's lot punishing. Of, yes. It's punishing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did stop this. And so I got into it three minutes. I think I put three minutes of film on here. And I really didn't need to see anymore. I, I mean, I kind of knew who he was mm-hmm. after that. I think it was a five-minute take uh, or something of that nature. Okay. Um, is this the, the – is this Kevin's deal? Yes, or is this, this is the, Kevin's. Okay, so now you're going to see the difference in this, and this one you have to figure out what style or run do you like, right? Because they're going to have to be used in different ways because 
as you said, this this guy's look at the speed. Ooh, look at the he's speed. Ex- he's explosive. You he know? is gone. So when you look at the film, we saw no runs like that from Daniel. Right? There was no one where he just broke away. That may not fast, but this is automatic when you're talking about right at the beginning. This shows right here, like, oh, okay. This that's got some wheels. That's you know? lightning. Hey, you know, you know who else got wheels? That what are you finna say the official or the other guy that was yeah. at least kind of tracking him down that a little guy. bit? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. He got some, he was hurting later on though. His hamstrings. Nah, he, he wasn't right. hurting. He wasn't hurting like uh like the, the back judge in the middle of the field was hurting because that oh, dude he, he just got him. out of the way. He didn't try to do nothing. So yeah. I mean they're getting it, man. You gotta get down there and call a touchdown. He got his track form running up the sideline. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is Kevin Riley that we're watching. So different type run, right? Uh, speed, just up. You see, make you know cuts. Just look at him. Just take away the angle. Just just take the entire angle away from the defender. Yeah, he reminded me of Donovan Lester. Yeah. Um, JT when we saw that. So it's again. I, what I like is the one, one foot cut. in the ground, yeah. one cut, and then going, and, and you just know the speed because. It doesn't even matter what he's doing. No one's even around him or touching. So, wheel route out the back. We're talking about using your hands, catching the ball. Different type guy, right? This is a – I don't want to say Jameer Gibbs. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just talking about the speed. When he's, jump cut he's, yeah, he's patient. I mean, he's – This is the vision right here. You see it, and the book to pop out. Like, that's the vision. Hey, we That's just pure vision. Be alert to jump cut. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, and he's making people miss. So he, he's a different guy. And he's a runner. But there's some other pieces that, that you're going to see in here. It could be this. But he's about to lower his head down. No. No. Nope, maybe not. Still running. He just wanted to go. Fast, folks. I'm, I mean, that's ridiculous. You know, where it just. He's a dude, but oh, here uh, it is. Oh, here yeah, it you is. See physicality, Ooh. breaking through, breaking all people, get off me, you know, Debo and people. That's and he's got some more hits on here where he's oh, actually yeah. where he's uh totally Move. putting the shoulder. Oh, mm, get wow. off me. Yeah, man. So it that's a so I don't know which one it is you want to see first, but you can see how how different <laughs> they are, you know. Um, and then when you're competing in this way, which, which should make it, Stephen, where you're looking is, okay, what's this guy going to look like in spring? Or what are both of them, you know? Um, it's, 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 it's crazy because w- watching both of them, I mean, I kind of want to really see what does Kevin Riley look like in spring ball? Because just, just watching the tape here, you see the speed. I mean, you look see, at that. though. Uh, you see the spot, but, but then you also see – the pinball contact balance of Josh Jacobs. Watch you this. see that. Watch this. Ooh, run that back. Run that back. Did you see that? I just saw. I mean, you 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 see the Ugh. contact. You see the contact break Uh-oh. tackle. Watch this. Oh, <laughs> hey, that, bro. That's that's Josh Jacobs right there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, that's how you know that you know this is is different. And I, I don't. Yeah, see, because I mean, what I, what what I like about him, and, and this run kind of demonstrates it, is you can see still the patience out of here, being able to make one cut and get up the field, and now he's not trying to dance and avoid people to get to the end zone. He knows that he's going to use his speed to get to the end zone, and if you just happen to be in the way after that, then I will remove you from mm. the way. Yep, uh, that's right. So, so good. Um, I mean, just physical, got some stuff in the tank, you know. So, Jamie Wilhelm, he said, or he or she, I'm not sure, got here late. Who is this? Uh, this is Kevin Riley. This is an early enrollee running back that is currently on campus at Alabama. And the fact that you got him to flip late from Miami <laughs> to Alabama, you got him to flip late to, to make that move because. T County High was down for a few years. He Riley helped bring that program back. They were down. They were they had quite a few losing seasons before last year. Mm-hmm. I, I think last year was the first time they got, I think, second or third round of the playoffs in a while. So 
Kevin Riley was a big reason why T County High sort of reemerged. Man, you know, this is this is absolutely amazing. Okay, so patience on the screen. That's right. That's right. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to this. When I get to A Day, I kind of want to see how he ends up because just imagine how much stronger he's going to get cutting back. I mean, just, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's too easy. Um, Oh, well, here's your block for you. Watch out. Boom. Did y'all see that? Do y'all need to see that again? Did y'all see who that was? JT, you might need to write your own circle on right before he gets ready to make the hit. So they can get get their eyes on the right spot. Yeah. There's him. There's the speed and bullet. Mm -hmm. Oh, get out of the way. (laughs) Yeah, dude don't want to get up. Wildcat, (laughs) wildcat going through it. Okay, so, JT, if I can, um, yeah, that's the end of it. I had to let him get a little bit cheering. You know you can't take your helmet off like that. Oh, you can if that's the last play of the game. Yeah, that's true. You won't walk off. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. no, no. Go back to this. Oh. Um, to the Daniel tape and uh, let it run a little bit because I want to show you something that you don't want to have on your tape. Okay. Uh, I'm going to w- – <laughs> first of all, run it back. Just run it back. I want you to look at the defense. Okay, this dude on the – 35, stop it. Oh, my bad. Hold on. In the black. You you see him? I don't know if you can even circle him. We're talking about effort. Do you have a motor? Can you actually play? He's on the 36-yard line. This guy? Yes. So <laughs> keep your eyes on him. Run it back. Because these are the same people that will be saying, hey, my kid is a D1 or whatever. There he is on the 30 right now. So uh, just watch. The- that's just do. Yep. Just watching it. So just watching the effort, and there's certain things. So it won't show up on your highlight reel, but it shows up on other people's highlight reel, right? <laughs> Tired, walking, whatever. This guy's going down the field, and there's the other ones back there that are just kind of lollygagging. Those are also things that they look at. Look at this this film right here, because it's particularly when they're looking at defense alignment, do they actually turn and run to the ball, right? Those are things like that. So they show up on other people's film and then you scratched off the list because you got a really good highlight reel that have all your good plays, but you're not going to put that on your play, right? So my advice to the high school football player is these coaches watch the whole game. They're going to, they watch your uh, highlight reel to get the interest and then they go watch the whole game because they got access to the whole game. They pay a lot of money to have access to <laughs> to the whole film, right? And then they're looking at, is he lollygagging? What is he doing? Like these guys are doing. All right, that's my piece. Woo! That's good stuff, man. All right, so for the last words for this, right? Uh, dude, we're extremely happy, man, that you came on today, Stephen. You always bring it. You do what you do. Well, before we wrap up, we, we do have to uh... – Oh, yeah, we got some questions. Yes. Uh, Trainwreck says, my question is, does Coach DeBoer, if he sees Milrow not picking up his offense, go with AMAC or Dylan Lonergan or stay with Milrow? That is what's going to make this spring so interesting because I mentioned with DeBoer, there's no loyalty. So if if you're not doing the job, then somebody else is going to get in here and do this job. So – if, if Milrow is up there handling the business, then yes, it's going to be Milrow. But if there's some struggles and it's some complications with him getting this offense, you could see Austin Mack. And I, I wouldn't be shocked because you go back to last spring, there were a lot of the young players that were saying that Dylan Larnigan's the best quarterback in the room. So don't be surprised if Larnigan gets a shot in here, if Mack gets a shot in here, especially – if there is uh, complications with Milrow with this offense. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that you just can't. I, I don't think it's, hey, this is your job and your job only. I think well, just just like you said in the uh, in the last uh, the last live show uh, when we were talking about Kalen DeBoer 
uh, taken over and what happens when coaches get fired or retired. Um, everybody's contracts are essentially terminated. Uh, that goes for starting positions as well. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You yeah. got to earn it. Um, you know, I, I try to talk on that. I don't know if you had any. Uh, Thank you, uh, not the kill stream for the 499 Super Chat. So Steven, yeah. Steven Smith leading the charge for a night game A-Day. Thank you, sir. We do appreciate that. And this is, uh, we're very thankful to you, Mr. Not the kill stream. All right. Um, okay. So what I was going to say was about the, when you have coaching changes, I actually went through that part. I don't think you had a coaching change at any point in time in your career, JT. Did you high school or? Uh, uh, I did have a coaching college? change. Um, uh, Chris Creighton left and took the job at Eastern Michigan. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, you know, there's that piece of who brought you in, what kind of loyalties you had. I had a lot of angst when Bill Curry left because I didn't know who, the, you know, who the coach was going to be, who were going to really like me, how, what do I got to prove. They're going to bring in their own guys. So there's some of that. But I decided to stay, and it worked out well. And I think it can work out for these guys, too. They're good. They're athletic. They can play. It, every year they're always trying to over – recruit you is that the right way to say it over recruit you that's somebody behind you they're trying to figure out who the next oh yeah person no, I, is. And, I, and i tell that to, to um, guys all the time when they're high schoolers they try to or try to remind them or tell them for the first time of like you have to understand what your coach's job is He's got two jobs. He's got the job of coaching you and making you the best player that you can be for their system. But his other job is, uh, and, and I ask, and say, what do you think it is? They're like, oh, recruiting. I said, yes, but do you know what that actually means? It's like, yeah, you know, they got to go find. And I was like, no. Uh, recruiting means finding somebody better than you right now to come in right now, not finding your backup. That's not what they're doing. They're finding your replacement. Yep. No, no. I'll say this. Pro probably the one coaching turnover that I had that actually really helped me was when our special teams coach, Coach Turner, left. Coach Turner left to go pursue his career in being a lawyer. And we brought Coach Carpenter in. He was running a program in Birmingham. That was literally the first time where I thought, okay, I'm going to get a real fair shot at this thing. Because I remember Coach Carpenter sat there and and he looked at me, he was like, Steve, I'm going to tell you this right now. You don't, I, I don't see no physical gifts here when I look at you, <laughs> but I see a dude that's going to give flat out effort. So I'm going to give you every shot out here. So I remember Coach Carpenter came in. One of my first shots was me on special teams. I played every special teams. I played kickoff. I played kick return, punt return, uh, punt coverage, played it all. So I remember the first. I remember the first time I was out there on kickoff on kickoff team. Coach had then told me, Stephen, just run like you possessed. I, I, I I've seen your tape. You run like you stone crazy. Just go out there, run like you flat possessed, and hit. I, I don't care if the person got the ball or not. Just hit the first person you see. <laughs> so I sat there. So. I said, I said, Coach, say less. I kicked the ball off. I'm running down there. Knock out like two people. I jump on top of the guy, strip the ball from him. I'm trying to recover the ball. My teammate recovers it. I lose my cleat in the ground. The whole time, the head coach is like, Carpenter, why you got Steven out there on the field? <laughs> and, so, and Coach Carpenter like, Coach, he doing what I told him to do. Leave him alone. Don't put a saddle on him. Just let him be him. Let him, <laughs> let him go out there and be as wild as he want to be. He made a tackle. He just stripped the ball out. Leave that man alone. That's right. That's true. If you make a play, you do that. Uh, and, 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 that and, and at that point, I knew Coach Carpenter came about me. And he, he, he stayed for one year. He did not stay for my senior year. He came a junior year and left. That made me fine man. <laughs> <laughs> Are you crazy? JT, you got any more questions on now that we need to hit uh, before we go um, or comments that we need to see? Or yeah, I'm, try I'm trying to find. Slab Buster um, asked uh, first if you um, are still in contact with Coach Stallings and then how is he doing? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I am still in contact with Coach Stallings. He is doing 
I guess, as well as he can be for this. You got to know how many times he's had strokes and things of that nature. Uh, he's still stubborn as he can be. I actually just got an email about him today, ironically, that you even say that, that there's a, I don't even know if I'll say it. I'm just going to say be on the lookout for a big tribute um, to him uh, coming up from former players um, and different things because he's, you know, he's slowing down a little bit. And, you, you know, you have to start preparing for things like this. You don't want to ever say anybody's uh, going to pass away or something of, of that nature. But, you know, he's moving a, a little bit slower. Um, and guys are starting to rally around him. So uh, I'm expecting something pretty big. A lot of, you know, his former players to try to, get to worry back out about who he is and what he stood for all right and, and then the last one i don't know i think maybe steven might have might be the only one that has an idea um but b jamman asked i'm just curious who will end up returning punts next season that's a good question so there's a list of guys that could do it emmanuel henderson's one of them uh he was supposed to have been the punt returner last year got a hip injury in fall camp would never do it. So you got Emmanuel Henderson back healthy. He could do it. Cole Adams could do it. That's the second guy. Uh, let's see here. You got Emmanuel Henderson. You got Cole Adams. Kobe Prentice could do it if he wanted to, but I, I don't know if you would put Kobe Prentice back there. Kendrick Law could do it. Uh, do you want to put K Law Ooh. back there though? But it, it's it's the the whole the catch twenty two with all of this is when you put one of your best players back there to do it, it's always the fear of what if they get hurt, yep. you know, i.e. Eddie Jackson when that happened. And folks was like, why say that you put Eddie Jackson back there? Our best safety and he got hurt. Yeah, but Eddie if he was, was, was the best, best one. He was, was the best one to do it. He was the best one. He was the best one to do it. So there, 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 there's, a, there's a number of guys that could do it. It just comes down to number one, which one can catch the ball cleanly and not misjudge the balance of the ball every time? And then number two, which one can provide you the sense of excitement when they do catch the ball? You know what I think should happen in this situation? I think we need to find the person just going to go down there, run crazy, just run into stuff. You know, all the things Stephen Smith just talked hey, about. Hey, you you know got what? some eligibility left. You need to go out there, hey, walk you know on, put the bag hey, on just for hey, one part hey, return, hey, brother. Hey, 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 George, George, uh, I, got a, I got a semester of COVID eligibility left. <laughs> I got a semester of COVID eligibility left. You know what? I thought about it. Go ahead on, walk in. They'll, they'll, they'll put a helmet on me. And then they'll be they'll be in the background praying. Boy, they, they, they ain't got no pants to fit you. Your pants be fitting like uh, some horse jockey pants or something. Hey, JT, here's the prayer. Lord, please don't let us kill this man. <laughs> <laughs> this man, I am. Yeah, man, no. man, thirty years old trying to fulfill a dream. Man, don't let us kill him, man. <laughs> hey, we could do thirty for thirty on this. Hey, uh, we really could. We really All right. could. Okay, well. JT, anything else, man, before we uh put this up, uh wrap this up? I, I just want to, because, you know, all, all the thank yous I need to give just to the, the viewers, the fans, thank you for all that you're doing for the Bama Standard. Thank you if, uh, for what you're doing for Teak's Take, being loyal. The Teakster group is growing tremendously. Yeah, rapidly. Um, so if you, you are yes. on the Bama Standard and you haven't subscribed to uh, Teak's Take, that's youtube.com slash at Teak's Take, um, please do so, because – we we're, we're trying to grow um as well um we we have a q a video that we owe you because um i put out the call at uh i think like 900 uh subscribers to say once we got to a thousand that we do a q a video and then a week later uh you've got us up to 1400 and some change so we can't thank you enough for that um uh, we owe you it's coming um and grandbaby's to- getting away well, yeah, and I was supposed to send a link. Um, I guess I'll have to send it to Justin so he can put it on uh, his community page so um, folks can can ask you or me some questions. Um, I only put it on our channel right now. Yeah, that one That one we're supposed to do. We just want to sit back, get your, your red Solo cup, put your orange juice in it or whatever it is that you want in it. We just want to sit down and talk and have a good time. You guys ask questions like this. What is it? How do I feel about... Uh, you know, Bill Curry, or, you know, what was it like being around Gene Stallings or any other stuff that you want, or just any modern day stuff. Cause a lot of people, Hey, what in my opinion on the, 
uh, portal in the NIL. Let's just talk about it. You know, this is the time where we can just sit back and relax and don't have to get too why, deep in it. Right? Why does JT have a category for food flavors? Because <laughs> uh, right. flavors and sensations are not the same. Uh, well, see, this uh, uh, just the part where you both say, what to say, how it started. And how it's going. And how it's you going. guys are right. Yeah, you guys are right back to the same thing. So that <laughs> that gives me right there that we need to call this thing a day. Steven, thank you very much for everything that you do, man. We appreciate you. Y'all give him a follow over on Twitter, Coaching M. Smith on X. We are going to be back next week, though. Don't forget that. We're going to be back next Wednesday. Well, thank you for telling me. Time. Yeah, the 30-minute version, JT, the 30-minute oh, version. That's right. That's them only. Okay? So... We're going to catch you guys later, but this is Teague's Take. We're out of here. Peace.